Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Brian Jack with Superman's Comics, and we are back to talk about the market trends in the comic community. That's right. This is that three up, three down. We're giving you three up trends and three down trends midway through another comic week. Jack, my week, not comic related, is busy as Foxtrot. <laughs> but how's your week going? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, I'm in retail. We're heading towards that time of the year, uh, pandemic or not. But at the same point, uh, you know, the comic industry is moving quickly still. Uh, a lot of news and a lot to talk about. Uh, certainly, we've got some uh, movie news, uh, a little bit of publishing news. So good week to get into it. Yeah. And then also just last night, we recorded another episode of the Supplements Comics Friends podcast. This yep. time, another comic book publisher CEO. We had Mark London from Mad Cave Studios on. We were talking about Knights of the Golden Sun and Honor and Curse. That video will be up later this week, right? Absolutely. Yeah, that's another great, great interview. Uh, Mad Cave Studios has come a long way. We've we've interviewed Mark a few times now on the channel, and it's amazing the steps that they've taken. So I'm excited for you guys to hear that. A lot of great uh, nuggets of information um, for existing Mad Cave fans or any of you who may not have been yet exposed to the great books that Mad Cave Studios is putting out. So if you're new to this channel and you're just watching this video, make sure you subscribe. That way you'll be notified when that video drops. But with that being said, we're getting into those upward trends, starting with the first one. And we got Yara Floor. At first I was like, Jack, who the hell is that? But he quickly reminded me that's Future State, right? Future State Wonder Woman. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, again, this is a, a character who we haven't even fully seen. Now, some people say there's a cameo in that Wonder Woman annual. And certainly people are paying prices um, as if. So um, we talked about and compared that to the possible situation with Naomi and Action Comics. Is that a dangerous, uh, you know, uh, thing to go after? But people are on it. Um, and either way, it, there's more excitement for Yara Floor now that we know that there's going to be a Wonder Girl TV show with Greg Berlanti and the people that have been behind the CW Arrowverse this entire time. Uh, I think we got to get used to not calling it Arrowverse now with that arrow is uh, um, ended. But uh, either way, in this uh, CW television universe, we're going to get a Wonder Girl TV show with Yara Flora as the uh, Wonder Girl. And it's really a great way. If, if we know that there were certain characters that were kind of off the table for CW. Uh, and it was, you know, it's all the big ones you would want. Um, uh, they, they were blessed enough to be able to get Superman but they couldn't get Batman. They couldn't get Wonder Woman. Um, a lot of the characters who were actively involved in the, uh, you know, the movies um, that they had uh, different productions going Aquaman. Um, so getting to use this version of Wonder Woman, uh, it, it gives them a Wonder Woman within their universe and allows them to tell those stories, but it also gives them so much room to play because this is a brand new character, but it immediately validates the comic, the first appearance, um, because, you know, so many times with these characters, we're talking about the possibility of TV shows. Here you have a TV show coming before we've even gotten to read the first comic. So this is definitely going to put heat on Future State Wonder Woman number one um, and any of its exclusive variants, um, as well as, you know, the the certainly the Wonder Woman annual um, going forward. So this is one to be on the lookout for, for sure. Yeah, plus they've been showing some of those Future State Wonder Woman. Yeah. We got Jenny Friesen doing some of those covers on there, and she always knocks those out of the park. Next one we're talking about on 3UP. This one's been hot for a while now, too, but has gone nuclear within the past week. And we are talking about Ahsoka Tano from Star Wars. She is imminent to show up on Mandalorian, especially if you watched that last episode. Oh, yeah, just the mention of her name um, has sent... Uh, record-breaking prices on eBay for first appearance, as well as uh, really everything Ahsoka is selling. It's amazing. Uh, from obviously those Clone Wars first appearances, those Dark Horse books, the Dark Horse books are, um, you know, that's printing money. Uh, it's ridiculous. Black series figures. I mean, you're seeing Funko Pops. I mean, anything. Exactly. Um, what's amazing is the amount of like children's books that were printed um and, you know they a lot of those children's books star wars books use the clone war stuff and I, i'm seeing children's books specifically if there was like a cover to that book that was exclusive to say a target or a walmart um you're seeing those books go for incredible incredible prices um so yeah you mentioned funko pops the black series figures um this is a character who has really like really gripped um, the Star Wars community in a way that it kind of only Boba Fett maybe 
um, we've seen that you get characters that are popular for times. Um, and certainly you can talk about the Baby Yoda craze, but it, it was tough from a collectible standpoint because Baby Yoda was so popular prior to the collectibles coming out. So they were able to make enough supply to meet demand. Well, that's not the case with, with Ahsoka. So you're playing catch up right now. Um, so I, I, I sit and I wonder like what could possibly be the, the ceiling for this. And I really hope that the character when presented on the Mandalorian really delivers what everybody's expectations because people are so, so um, heavily invested. But at this point, man, they, you really, the sky's the limit with this character. Yeah, I was, I was going to say it's like this year's Batman Adventures 12 that was a couple years ago, but really it's not even that because, I mean, Ahsoka is still kind of earlier. Then you put the 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 star power behind Rosario Dawson. And I'm right. telling you right now, if you're watching this and you guys have not watched the Clone Wars cartoon, you're really missing out because there's so much backstory in that character there that led up, especially that final season. Fantastic. And that's why a lot of people cannot wait for to see her show up in Mandalorian, uh, myself included. Then the last one we have for you this week for the three up is we're seeing Gwenpool all over the place again. Yeah, this is one uh, Gwenpool probably could have made a list each of the last two weeks. Um, it's been one of the ones that's been kind of a candidate. It's tough because when we're doing this three up, three down list, it's really easy to find three things that are, that are going up. Three down tends to uh, be less competitive. So, you know, in any given week, there could be five, six, seven things that we could easily slide in. And you guys do a great job in the comments section, always letting us know what you see as up and down. Um, and we definitely read those and pay attention to those as well. But Gwenpool has made some serious strides over the last several months, which is interesting because there is no current Gwenpool comic um, hitting shelves. Uh, and it's funny because we on this channel have been talking Gwenpool for like a year. We've been noticing that there is a cult fan base for this character. And it's funny because everything about the character screams cash grab this is the type of crap we should like and let's be negative about it but we've talked at length about the quality of writing in the deadpool comics not to really like say that any of the writers themselves who have written the comics because some great writers some writers i'm a fan of have taken on the character but the way kind of like the publishing edict is to the character doesn't really kind of give us what we want with Deadpool. It kind of fits perfectly and everything has kind of been ver the opposite with Gwenpool. Um, Gwenpool has kind of over uh, delivered on expectations from a reader buzz standpoint on top of it because of the smaller print runs of her titles. Some of these cover Bs that are some of those qualifier variants that we talked about in a previous episode um, have really gotten rare and tough to find. Some of the incentives have gotten rare and tough to find. Uh, and even some of the regular issues, the regular runs, you're starting to see books go over cover price um, if for just random filler issues because people are trying to buy this run and put this run together. Uh, so it's real fandom, which you don't see within the big two. A lot of that's why Brian and I have a tendency to have one of the one of the reasons we tend to have a real love for these nostalgia properties in the 80s and 90s is while the fan bases may be smaller, they have a real love for it. And when you can find a product that they like, something that they connect with, uh, it, you know, you the sky's the limit. And you don't always get that with the big two because you're a Marvel fan, but you may not necessarily like you're not a Hulk you like Hulk, but he's not your guy. You're not buying everything Hulk. And it's different with Gwenpool. We're seeing that. And that's a very throwback thing. So, and you mentioned seeing her everywhere. That's the, the final part of this is I'm starting to see Instagram posts and um, I'm starting to see uh, people's haul videos. I'm starting to see other YouTubers uh, bring up Gwenpool. So it it's amazing because there's really no reason for any sort of push with this character there's no new book out there's no talk about other media we're not talking about a tv show or a movie but maybe we should be but either way the character is still in demand still in the news cycle so that's incredible that's that's real organic yeah and just noticed all three upward trends in the comic community are female comic book characters Wow, that's I didn't realize that. That's that was done uh, unintentionally, but there's a trend in and of itself, right there, Brian. Yeah, I just noticed that. But that's going to mean the three down are all male count. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but we are going to move over to the downward trends right now, and starting with that first one, we seem to talk about DC Comics a lot. lot 
last week we talked about them losing riders but now we're getting like some fake news i think this all stems we talk about dc but really it's going to stem from at&t on down and it's also important to know like the bad news is not just at dc comics it's at at&t i mean they're cutting stuff across the board but we got some fake news also right yeah so a lot of people don't understand like you mentioned these business things like AT&T being uh, the company that owns DC Comics, the fact that at and is having financial problems, their cuts are coming uh, across the board and uh, they're also a publicly traded company. So they're trying to manage a budget that will satisfy shareholders, which is a whole different beast from something that say, you know, an independent comic company has to go through with a single owner. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a very different and unique beast. Also, they made a decision to cut you know, a certain percentage of their publishing line as a strategic move because they felt like they had kind of overextended themselves, which is funny when you hear the negative talk in the comic community about that decision, when at the same point, it's the comic community itself who's been screaming, oh, there's too many books, there's too many variants, do you need to cut back, you need to focus, which is exactly what they did. Um, Now, there's really no way to sugarcoat the recent layoffs. It is what it is. We're in the middle of a pandemic, Every business is hurting. Um, you'd love to see every business support all their employees and keep all their employees paid. That that would be ideal. But the unfortunate reality is that isn't happening. Um, but the news cycle gets out of control. And look, we can talk about any topic. Certainly, we just got done. I'm not going to get into the election we just had, but certainly coming out of an election cycle, we're all very aware of the way a news story can get like out of hand and can just go quickly from something somebody said. Especially if you're on Twitter. <laughs> right. So I have seen posts on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook of people hitting the panic button because of an article in Cosmic Book News. Um, and they're saying, well, Cosmic Book News is reporting that DC Comics is going to end publishing comics in, in June. And is this true? And everybody's hitting the, the panic button and freaking out. Um, first off true until it hits babylon b with the duffel blog <laughs> right first off yeah you whenever you're evaluating anything i don't care if it's politics news sports um you got to look at the source okay and i'm i'm not trying to come out here and down talk cosmic book news i don't know the people who own it but they are one of these like copy and paste news sources they just put posts that they see other places on their website so the p- thing is cosmic book news did not say any of this so whenever I see people's Facebook posts and things, they're always saying, well, Cosmic Book News said this. Well, no, Cosmic Book News did not. No, they posted it. Yes. And the person who said it and they quoted is Ethan Van Shriver. So then when you, you say, well, let me consider the source even further. We're talking about a shunned former DC Comics employee. <laughs> That's like uh, the Matthew McConaughey from uh, Days to Confused. He used to be on the team. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is what I'm saying. Like, you're talking about like the worst source for what something is happening within DC Comics. Also, if you know anything about Ethan Ben Schreiber, and I'm not going to get into like Comics Gate or his political stances or any of that crap, it's nothing to do with that. He's long been a, a believer and a proponent uh, that the direct market is going to collapse, right? The comics are going away, even though year in and year out we see record sales. Uh, we, it, we keep posting numbers that are like staggering and new records in the comic community. Um, but yet there's still this fear and it comes from these people who have these like doomsday theories. Um, and it, it, one of them we've talked about and we, and we've, you may see in the comment section of Larry Doherty from Larry's comics, who's a shop owner in uh, um, the Massachusetts, Boston, Massachusetts area. Uh, I regularly see him on Twitter uh, every time a, you know, a comic sells a hundred thousand copies He'll tweet at Ethan Van Triver and go, oh, the comic book industry is going down, huh? So this has long been a debate. Um, but the problem is now, because people saw this on a website, they're, they're reporting this fact or they're getting afraid and nervous as fact. So you're seeing Instagram posts saying, oh, no, DC is going to shut down. The only people on- that are like that are the people that see those articles that support their side of the argument. And they're like, ha-ha, I told you. <laughs> and what does that feel like? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, definitely... What do they say? Trust but verify, right? Absolutely. Moving on, the next one we're talking about on Downward Trend. We're huge fans of Kanto, in case you didn't know on this channel. Mm-hmm. But those Kanto Holloman variants, they're kind of down right now. But like we always say, that presents great buying opportunity. I'm going to go one step further, Brian. 
It's a public service announcement right now. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I can't say can't this. Can't you ain't going nowhere? I can't say this strongly enough. Um, read between the tea leaves all you want. Um, we told you by Canto One. It exploded. Then we came back and said, hey, look at what's going on with Canto well, Two. Kind of a correction. We don't tell anyone to buy anyone. We just strongly urged our opinion on that. what we thought about Canto. That's true. That's true. We said, yes, we said, but if you're a speculator, this is what we think. This is where we see. We think this thing has legs. Then we came on and we talked about on the top 10 show pay attention to the first volume variants for two through five these are being these are underprinted and they're being slept on and they're going for a ratio once they were no longer like the new hot book and now look at what those are going for i just saw like issue four sell for a hundred dollars um now we've moved into the next volume and we told you guys from the get-go, Canto to the Hollow Man, the interesting thing about issue number one is it introduces new characters. And if you're already buying Canto because you believe like this is going to be a movie, this is going to be a TV show. So that's why I'm investing in this for that purpose. Well, the new characters, I, I really don't think like the first movie would only encompass that first arc of the comic. Uh, a, a feature length movie only being like five issues is that's not common. So you would probably see these characters very soon within a movie, TV show, things like that. So I, we said there's an investment potential there. So we talked about that. Now, as the series has progressed, um, we're starting to see the same trend with this volume that we saw in the first volume, which is once the books are a couple weeks old, the variants start to kind of drop in price, which is indicative of everything in modern comics, right? But what you said, Brian, is the key. Canto isn't going anywhere. There's going to be more Canto. The creators have been on this channel saying that um, they are all in on Canto as far as, you know, efforts beyond in other media. That's the goal. That's what they're looking for. Everything that you would want. They say everything you would want to hear a creative team that you were backing, um, you know, their, their, their work. And, I think that what everybody does a lot of time, well, I don't want to say everybody, what a lot of people do is they're, they're playing follow the leader instead of going, you know, where others aren't. So everybody's chasing the books with Canto that everybody's chasing, but there are some books right now that are being left, left on the table. And especially even with the issue number one situation, we have the error version and then the corrected version. Well, that just drove down the prices on both of them. But the reality is it's two separate versions of the book. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see over time if we start seeing variances with that. We talked about that on this very show. So you're right, Brian. It, it's it's down, but it's a buying opportunity for sure, which is one of the best values of this show. Yeah, we say it's a buying opportunity, but we're going to do you one better. We're going to do you a giveaway opportunity. I think the number one Canto fan, I'll even concede this to her. If you guys know, number one Canto fan all over Instagram, Lala Schultze, she donated that San Diego Comic-Con variant that we gave away earlier. She also donated a New York Comic-Con variant that we're going to give away for Canto as well. And in order to win this, it's going to be super easy. You got to do two things. She started a YouTube channel, fantastic YouTube channel. So I'm going to put that up on the screen here right now. Go to YouTube, search for Lala Schultze's channel, subscribe to that channel, and then comment on this video, just like we did with that Ross Ritchie interview. Comment on this video and tell us you subscribe to Lala and you'll be entered to win this fantastic New York Comic Con Canto variant. Right, Jack? Absolutely. And if you look again, look at prices of the first volume, you're going to want to get your hands on this New York Comic Con variant. It is, it is already a beast and it is sure to continue to be one. And thank you to Lala for donating that to somebody in the yeah. Simpleman's Comics family. She's all about community. She's all about Canto. So yeah, super generous for her to donate that. And we're not going to keep you in suspense. We will announce the winner for that on 3 Up, 3 Down next week. But that's going to move us into the last one on the 3 Down. And we are talking about Late Prince again, but it's down right now to hold on to him. Yes. Yeah, so we're starting to see trends. And it takes time to see trends. You know, it takes time for patterns to develop. So this explosion of late prints that's been going on, um, 
it, it, it's something that is now been going on long enough that we're starting to see some pricing patterns. And one of which is the way that these like ebbs and flows of pricings occur is, you know, the book dries up completely. And then you start to see that price escalation because each person who puts that first copy or second copy, they're putting it for a higher and higher price. And you start to see when the book gets sold for those prices, it get reported all over Instagram, all over Twitter, on the Key Collector app, or your favorite comic book website, um, or different YouTube channels or shows. And once that happens, it sends everyone digging for books. So at that point, there is almost a race to be that next person to get your book up for sale so you can continue that upward trend. If you wait too long, while these books that we're talking about are most of them, the reason why they're popular is the scarcity. It doesn't take many copies to make something go from scarce to not scarce. While a book, a popular variant that comes out this Wednesday will have 100, 200 listings. And we're talking about a book that may have five listings. There is a huge difference between a book that only has one copy listed versus a book that has five copies listed because you need each individual person to stay within a pricing structure. It takes one person to undercut and then another person to undercut to then create a price drop pricing war. And that will tank pricing. So what I've noticed is certain books, maybe like the Spider-Gwen number zero second print, a book that dried up and went up to like $400. And then there was a recent sale where somebody got impatient and took $120. So now the question is, is it a $400 book or a $120 book? Um, and then the next person who makes a sale, that's going to happen. We've seen it um, to even larger degree with some of the late printings, like um, percentage wise, like something's killing the children. They dry up, uh, you know, they get reported on maybe by like our guy, Andy Tomberlin from the Indie Spotlight series, who does a great job reporting on Instagram, a lot of eBay sales. He may report like, you know, like he did, like something's killing children on once in future, number one, eighth print hits some record $70, $80 price, uh, you know, and if you sell it within the next couple of days, you can also achieve that price. If you wait for another dozen to hit eBay, well, then you're going to get 40 instead of the 80. So what we're saying is if you're looking to resell these books, if these are prices that, um, you know, you're like, oh my God. You don't want to sit and hold it for another couple of weeks. You want to react once you start to see those pricing. And uh, you can even play that game. I know, Brian, you've been an advocate of this, of sell it when it's hot, buy it back when it's cheap if you really want it. Um, you can kind of play that, keep that middle middle money. Um, that's certainly available to you. But these, these are, it's just a process. These are all things we have to learn. Um, and, and as the kind of the market is constantly changing, we can't complain about it. We got to kind of just sit back, pay attention to it, and learn how to act accordingly. Yeah, and then it's also important to know, I mean, that kind of divided up into different sections of what, what your motive is in the comic collecting. If you're looking Absolutely. to flip, it's definitely one that's important. If you want to collect, there's those there's completions out there that this doesn't even come into their mind. Yep. They just want to buy it. All those late printings or everything of that one title to have in their collection. But it's also, I'm, I'm anxious to see how this plays out because there was a time where late printings, it was like, the, it was boo-boo. I mean, you didn't want that. It was like, ah, I want that first print or nothing. Then the scarcity started coming into play. We've seen the popularity of late prints. I'm anxious to see, we talk long-term a lot, long-term, how does yep. this play out? I'm sure whether it comes, you know, rises, drops back down again, there's always going to be some outliers, but it's going to be a fun thing to watch. I, I don't really have any skin in the game. I pick a, I'm more of the other side where add to my collection. I'm not flipping right now, but you'll hear it. And I'm sure we'll get comments on this video. Anytime you post on Instagram, there's, there's sides to, both camps right and it's like what's going on with late prints and there's some that's just all about it so yeah there's there's some who think that you know the prices of say like the venom late prints are going to tank one day and just like you said no one's going to care about them anymore and there's some that think that it's going to extend to the point that some of these worthless late prints from even like the 80s like a new mutants 87 will one day become valuable and then one one that we look at right now it's kind of you know one to keep an eye on is the edge of spider-verse yeah absolutely Absolutely. Yeah. So it's, 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 and it's hard for us to tell. And that's why Brian and I, we really don't try to make those kind of predictions. Instead, we, we really kind of trying to report on what we're seeing happening um, and, and try to allow you to decide uh, what you want to do and how to buy what you like. Yeah. Just opinions. We just offer opinions. 
But there it is, guys. There's three up, three down. Remember, subscribe to Lala Schultz's YouTube channel. Yes. I'll also put a link to her channel in the description of this video. So if you subscribe over to her channel, I mean, fantastic. Great member of the community. Awesome. I mean, we can't say enough good things about her. But subscribe. Put a comment in there that you sus I subscribe to Lala. And you'll be entered to win that New York Comic Con Canto 2 variant, right? Absolutely. Yeah. You're definitely going to want to win that. So make sure you subscribe. Make sure you head to our Ross Ritchie video where we've got another giveaway going on over on that video. And definitely stay tuned for that Mark London interview hitting soon. Yeah. Mark London, we're going to be giving away trade paperbacks for both Nights of the Golden Sun and Honor and Curse. So we got some giveaways going on. That Ross Ritchie one, we will announce the winner of that next week as well. So make sure you stay tuned. Subscribe so you get notified of the videos. So you can watch to see who is the winner of that. That's a good one. Bolo box, $100 value for Absolutely. Boom exclusive variants. Well, with that being said, guys, this is Brian Jack with Superman's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video. Oh,